welcome. We are excited about the message that God has prepared for us today. And we thank you so much for taking the time to spend some time with us. Now, we know that you may be watching us on YouTube, maybe our website today, but we have DVDs that are going out all across Missouri and Kansas and Illinois. Uh, even as we speak, these DVDs are going out. And if you would like some of these DVDs, please contact us. Blake has the information that you'll see at the end of this program today. But thank you so much. We want to thank our congregation for coming today. We have many, many churches in the area that they could have chosen to go to today, but they decided to come to Touching Hearts Ministries. And here's what we preach here. We preach the incredible love and grace of a Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. And we preach the incredible transforming power of the Holy Spirit that is offered to everyone and everyone uh, God would love to see in the kingdom. So He's offering you today a free gift of eternal life if you'll just accept it. And the message today is called Total Eclipse of the Heart. We're going to find out today why sin reigns in a once perfect world. Let's bow our heads today. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege and the honor of preaching Jesus Christ to your people. And today, Lord, may you brighten some hearts and minds and souls as to the saving power of the lovely Jesus. Bless this message with thy Holy Spirit. And I pray that the message comes easy. Lord, take this complicated sermon today and make it simple enough that anyone could understand it and it can only be done through the Holy Spirit. Guide me and direct me. Give me the, the proper words to speak today, Father. Thank you again for the privilege of preaching Jesus Christ, my best friend, your people. If you're turning your Bibles with me today, we're going to turn to Psalms 14.1. And, you know, this will give you a bird's eye view of what the world, Carolyn, thinks about God today. If you'll turn to Psalms 14.1, here's what the Bible says. Listen carefully. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Seventy percent of the world today, Doug, actually believes there is no God. And the Bible says they're a fool. Why? Because of all the evidence that we see that there is a God. Now, let's go a bit further. They are corrupt. They are blind. They have been blinded. They are cold in heart. Listen, they have done abdominal works. There is none that doeth good. Now, let me break that down to what the SDA commentary says about it. When I do a lot of my studying, Bobby Joe, I turn to the SDA commentary. Here's what they said. Here's a fool. It describes what a fool is. A person who is deficient either morally or intellectually. One or the other, morally or intellectually, they are deficient. Or they went on to say maybe they're both. They lack wisdom. They lack knowledge. They lack moral values. Oh, does the world need to see some moral values today? It goes on to say they lack spiritual insight. They are colorblind to moral and religious values. That's what a fool is, according to the Bible. And we're going to find out today why these folks, 70% Jan of the world, believe there is no God. And we're going to find out why. Now, let's go a little bit further. Let me break that down a little further. They say there is no God. But in their hearts, listen, there is no room for a belief in God. Listen, their understanding has been darkened. There is no light in them. Their hearts are cold and as black as night. Why? Satan has diverted. Now, if you don't get anything else, Bob, out of the sermon today, I want you to get this. Satan has diverted all light from their hearts. It is called a total eclipse of the heart. And we're going to find out exactly what's going on with the moral values of our world today and why we don't have any moral values today, Rosemary. We're going to find out today. Matthew 25, 34. If you get a chance, those that are viewing in today, get your Bibles out. I want you to write these scriptures down. And after we go off the air today, I want you to go back into the Bible to study them for yourselves because it's not what Pastor Donnie says today. It's what the Bible says. Here's what the Bible says in Matthew 25, 34. Then shall the king say to them on his right, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now, let me break that down. Listen very carefully. Those standing on the right hand of God 
reflect the light of God which resides in them. We are to reflect the character of God. If Satan is anywhere, Robbie, in my life, I will not reflect the true character of who and what God is. Let's go a bit further here. They are, the Bible says, those that accepted Jesus Christ, are the candles which reflect the light of the character of God today. Listen. They are those that resisted the devil. And in their presence, the devil fled with the tail between his legs because the glory of God penetrates the darkest of the darkest. And everybody said amen. If we want to know what truth is, we have to study what the Word of God says. It's not what the wisdom of the science to say or about the Big Bang theories or whether we originate from monkeys or not. We have to go to what the Bible says where the true light comes from. Let's go a little bit further here. When Jesus said this, this is Jesus talking, come and inherit the kingdom of heaven that was prepared. It was a kingdom. Here's what God does for us out of his great love. This kingdom that the Bible's talking about, we're going to talk about the New Jerusalem a little bit later, it was designed for the wants and the dreams and the hopes of God's children. And everybody said amen. You know, years ago, when we, <laughs> it's been years ago now, we raised four sons. And when we would buy them something, it was something that they had dreamed about. It was something that they had thought about. We just didn't go out just to buy to buy. It was something that they wanted. Is anybody with me? I wanted to make them happy. God has designed a heaven and a city and an inheritance, something that he knows that I'm going to enjoy. Come on, somebody. God wants a spiritual, Elaine, a spiritual, intimate relationship with each and every one of his babies. And everybody said amen. Listen, the mansions, the Bible talks about, Robbie, the streets of gold, the new Jerusalem, all were designed with God's children on his mind. <laughs> Come on. The fruit, the trees, the grass, the golden streets, the pearly gates were all designed for God's babies. Listen, this, now here, listen, this same Jesus that's talking here about the kingdom to come. This same Jesus is the same Jesus that knelt in the Garden of Eden and took clay and molded and created Adam. This is the same Jesus that walked in the fire with the three Hebrew children. Listen, this is the same Jesus that hung and was forsaken and rejected and died on an old wooden cross. This is the same Jesus that spoke to Paul on his way to Damascus. This is the same Jesus, listen, that John the Revelator described in Revelation the first chapter. From Genesis to Revelation, it's all about Jesus. He is the true light. I want you to get the philosophies and the conjecturing of the science of the world today, and I want you to throw them in the trash. Because they are all trash, because Jesus Christ, the Creator, is not mentioned anywhere. Come on, somebody, help me. So today, we're going to find out that Jesus is, is the light. We're going to find out today that in heaven, listen to the doors, we don't need a sun up there. We'll have Jesus. And His glory, the Bible says, will light up not just heaven, but the whole universe. And everybody said, Amen. This light, this glory, this power has been obstructed by the devil ever since, listen, when he sinned, the devil stepped in between God and man, and there's nothing but the shadow of Satan on the world today. But that's all going to change. Let's go a little bit further. Here's what it says in the first chapter. This is very careful. Verse 10. And it was in the Spirit, John said in Revelation, on the Lord's day. Now, what day would that happen to be? The Bible calls the Lord's day. It's the seventh day Sabbath, right? Amen. Is anybody with me so far? We talked about that a couple weeks ago. And here's what John said. I heard behind me a great voice like a trumpet. And I turned, John said, to see the voice that spoke behind me. And I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst, I saw Jesus. Come on. Talking to Genesis, the Revelation. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And he describes Jesus, Amber. Listen. Jesus, his head and his hairs, listen, were as white 
as wool. And he went on to say, no, much more. It was whiter than snow, and his eyes were as the flame of fire. But here's what I like about this passage. I went back to the SDA commentary, Ben, and here's what it said right there. Listen very carefully. John was witness to Christ in his glorified body. <laughs> I've never seen Jesus in his glorified body. Listen, a body, here's what I love about it, was still in human form, and he will carry this body throughout eternity. Why, Kathy? Why? It says this glorified Lord is our brother, and he wants to relate with us throughout eternity. He did not go back to that godlike body, whatever that was, Dad. He will keep the human form so that when he walks and talks with us, it'd be like a brother coming to visit us. Come on, somebody. This is the Jesus I'm talking about today. This is the Jesus that is intensely in love with you. This is the Jesus Christ that the Bible says in Hebrews, he looked forward with joy to hanging on the cross. He liked pain? No. He could see the fruits of his death on the other side of the cross. Come on. When we look into Revelation, it says that there were a multitude of saints that stood before the crown and they were all wrapped in his righteousness. And someone said, who are all of these saints? Listen, wrapped in these white robes. And the elders said, hey, listen very carefully. These are the ones whom Jesus died for. And when Jesus was on the cross, he looked past all the suffering all the pain, looked on the other side of that cross, and he seen a number of saints that no man could number, so his death, he knew, would not be in vain. Come on, somebody. This is the Jesus that I know today. Let's go a little bit further here. Now, Christ here, John the Reveler said, read, listen, it was as white as snow, and his, here's the point we're going to be making today, his countenance was as a fiery flame. His voice as the sound of many waters, as deep as the ocean crashing upon the shores. His voice, the Bible says, was deep. It was majestic. It was the voice of a resurrected, glorified Christ. That's who John saw. And you know what's good about it, Rosemary? We get the same too. We will witness God Jesus Christ in his glorified body, and there's not going to be any darkness there, both folks. The Bible says that in Jesus Christ, he is all light, and there is no darkness in him. Then it goes on to say about the devil, there is no light in him at all. He is all darkness. When he stepped between God and man, his shadow was cast behind him, and the whole world is worshiping the devil. Come on, somebody help me. As a whole, the world is worshiping the devil today. Wow. And as you read through those that are viewing in today, as you read through Genesis, all in Revelation, here's what it says about Jesus. Meek, kind, reassuring, loving, yet with power and grace. That's the Jesus that I serve. And here's what the Bible says. Listen, in verse 2, 9, 1 Corinthians, but it is written, I hath not seen nor ear hath heard, neither has even entered to the hearts of man what God has prepared for them that love him. And I wrote this down, Bobby Dale. Listen. Because of God's great love, Darren, for his children and his grace toward them, God has provided us life. In this life, he has given us so many blessings. Lane, you talked about that earlier. Listen to this. He has given us the forgiveness of sins, the gift. He has given us justification. He has given us sanctification. He has given us the joy and the peace and the grace that is imparted to every believer. And everyone said amen. When I look back on my past life before Christ, it's dark. It's cold. It's nonsense. <laughs> my whole life before Christ was nonsense. Is anybody with me? Let's go a bit further now. The inexpressible wonder and the beauty and the joy of God's kingdom of glory is waiting for those who truly love him. They are the ones that live for him, that, listen, they obeyed him, they trusted him, they placed their lives within his hands. They're, listen, they are those who would experience the things that God has prepared for their children. 
I heard uh, on 3 ABN this week another sermon. Thank God the Seventh-day Adventist movement is finally waking up. Come on, somebody. One of the most dynamic pastors in the Adventist movement today said, finally, the Adventist movement are starting to preach Jesus. <laughs> he said, we have preached the law and prophecy so long, we forgot about Jesus, the light of the world. So, folks, today, it's not about prophecy. It's not about doctrine. It's all about Christ. Once you fall in love with Christ, you're going to follow the doctrine. <laughs> Come on. You're going to follow his Ten Commandment law because you love him. It's all about Christ. And I love this pastor. He said, finally, we're coming alive. Can somebody give me an amen on that? All right, let's go a bit further. Now, all oh, the joy. I want you to think about this. Before the devil, Dad, stepped in between God and man, listen to this. Oh, what joy and peace that Adam and Eve must have experienced with this one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus, their Creator. Listen to this. They were able to stand and look Him eye to eye. Come on. Why? Because they had a perfect character. They were perfect. No darkness in them whatsoever. But listen, here's what happened. Robbie, here's what happened, CJ. But in the moment that sin entered, a total eclipse of the heart took place. You're going to say why. Listen carefully. Satan, the evil one of darkness, stood between God and man, and the glory of God, which had shone upon the earth, was cut off by the dark, evil, and cold alien that we call Satan. Here's what the Bible says. I didn't say it. The heart of man, the nature of man, began to darken immediately. Transformation took place in the hearts of Adam and Eve, Rosemary, immediately. How do you know? When Jesus came to walk with them, they hid. They looked at each other and said, uh-oh, we're naked. I believe that the glory and the Shekinah of God was so bright around, they didn't even know they were naked. Come on, somebody. But when Satan stepped in, they hid and they accused each other. Adam said, she made me do it. And Eve said, Adam made me do it. See what I'm talking about? There was deception. There were lies. They hid. There was a transformation of heart taking place when sin entered in. Can somebody help me? Let's go a bit further. The longer the light of God, listen, the longer the glory of God and His light is hidden, when it's blocked, it's deterred, listen, the darker the motives, the darker the dreams, and the darker of man's life, a world becomes cold and dark. This is the world that the devil now has created. Is anybody with me? With him is nothing but chaos and grief and pain. And folks, the world is eating it up. Can somebody help me? The world is eating it up. I heard a song yesterday as I'm flipping through. I go to 103.9. They got a great religious station there. As I was flipping through, a song came on and it said, Heaven is just a sin away. And I thought, no, hell is just a sin away. What is hell? You're going to burn in hell forever? Hell is eternal death. That's what it is. That's hell. It's in the grave forever and ever and ever. She said, Heaven is just a sin away. That's the world's view. Can somebody help me on that? That's the world's view. Let's go a bit further. Now, the total eclipse which took place on August the 21st was an awesome sight. It was. It was quite a spectacle. Even as the moon began to slowly move, now get where we're going here, between the earth and the sun, it was still bright. Even when the sun was half covered, it was really bright. But once that moon came in between the sun and the earth, come on, you all with me on this? It got dark. The lights began to come on. The cricket started to chirp. Come on, somebody. Brenda said, let's go to bed. I mean, everything happened like that. All at once. Darkness. It was like, well, it was late, late evening instantly. The moment that the devil came in between God and man, that's the same effects that took place, but it was worse. It took place spiritually. Is anybody with me? Now, I'm going to go on and read this for you. I wrote it down. I didn't want to forget. 
The moon removed itself from the direct path from the earth and the sun. And once the moon moved, the bright light of the sun again ruled the day. Not so with Satan. He has obstructed the light between God and man, and the darkness still prevails upon this earth. But here's the good news, Carolyn. But soon. You remember that song, Soon and Very Soon? But soon and very soon, that dark alien called Satan will be removed forever. Come on, somebody. Forever. And there will be no need for a sun in the new world, for the glory of God will light up the, the universe. Let's read in Revelation 21, 23. Here's what the Bible says. Listen. And that city, that new Jerusalem, the city of the redeemed, had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did light it up. And the Lamb, who is the Lamb? Jesus Christ is the light thereof. Let's go a bit further with this. Listen carefully. Millions of people, astronomers and scientists viewed this eclipse. Cameras, phones, telescopes from around the world recorded this mind-boggling event. Darkness covered for the first time in 100 years, Doug, from one coast to the other coast. All of America was in darkness. You see where I'm going? <laughs> America has stepped out of the light of God and has stepped behind into the shadow of Satan and America is crumbling. Can somebody help me? We have accepted the darkness. But let me add this, Jan. There is a day coming. Those that are viewing in, I want you to go into Revelation and study Revelation 21. There is a day coming, soon coming, that the earth and the universe will light up with a brightness that man has never seen. You won't need phones. You won't need cameras. You won't need glasses. You won't need telescopes to see this event. The whole world will be able to view and see the coming of God. The Bible says every knee, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. When Christ comes, you won't need any glasses for eclipses or darkness. It's going to be all brightness, folks. I can tell you what. You'll need some spiritual glasses is what you're going to need. When Jesus Christ comes, everyone, listen, Amber, on this planet will see God coming. And there will be no darkness. It's going to be the brightness and the glory and the Shekinah of God and the angels and the Holy Spirit and Christ coming all at once. Come on. The Bible says that all of heaven is emptied for this great event. You won't need flashlights. <laughs> you won't need any generators, Doug. The whole world is going to fall to the knees, and most of them are going to say, my God in heaven, what have I done? There are no second chances. When Christ comes, let the just be just still. Let the unjust be unjust still. And every man, the Bible says, we may read that in just a minute, will receive their reward. Did they trust in God? Did they stand in the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or did they hide in the shadows of the devil? Let's go a bit further. Now, Revelation 1, 7, here's what the Bible says. And God and Christ and the angels and the Holy Spirit, they will come in the clouds. And every eye on this earth, and also, by the way, those that killed Christ, that persecuted Christ, they're going to see a glimpse of Jesus when he comes as well. A special resurrection for them. And he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. And those that pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth, they shall wail because of Christ's coming. Wailing means to me, I'm going to be shouting. <laughs> the other wail is, well, one of my favorite writers, Mrs. Ellen G. White, said she had a vision. And as Christ was coming from the east, an elder behind her screamed, I can't believe he's coming now. I am not ready. Come, somebody help me. He said, I didn't know it was going to happen so quick. That's the thing about God. He's just coming like that. Let's go a bit further. Revelation 1, 7. No, let's go to Matthew 24, 27 while I have time. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth to the west, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. 
and then he shall appear. The sight of the Son of God in heaven. Listen, all of the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, and I love this, Blake, with power and great glory and great light. Let's go on. Appearing in great light. The light, listen, that Satan has obscured for 6,000 years. That light will be gone forever and ever and ever. And the Bible says that the evil angels and the devil shall be consumed and they will be gone forever and ever and ever. Come on, somebody. Forever they're going to be gone. We could, that's another subject we'll get into some other time. But listen to this. From the moment Jesus spoke this planet, Earth, into existence, the paramount desire of our Creator was that everyone on this planet would accept His invitation to spend eternity with Him. 1 John 1, 9, we went over this a few weeks ago, Kathy and Elaine. If we confess our sins, the God of light, He is faithful and He is just to forgive us and He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But listen, there is a movement. Here's what the devil has done. He's brought all of the darkness into this world and with that diluted truth and untruth as well. Here's one movement that the devil has raised and every time I read it, I just want to pass out from nausea. Listen, there is a movement that began over 100 years ago and they teach this, that everyone who has ever been born will be in heaven. That's deception. That's a lie. That they, from the time of their birth, Blake, were destined for heaven. That salvation will be given to every man regardless of their lifestyle. Doesn't that just sound like the devil to you? <laughs> regardless of your lifestyle, what you think about God, whether He exists or not, whether you reject Him or not, whether you accept Him or not, it doesn't make any difference. You can live any way that you want to do. You can be a murderer, you can be a prostitute, you can be a drug addict, you can be a wife beater, you can be whatever you want, you're still going to heaven. That's what the devil has brought. Let's listen carefully. They teach that God is a God of love and He would never destroy anything that He created. The Bible tells me that He created Lucifer. Is He going to destroy Lucifer? Why? Lucifer made the cognitive decision, a willing decision, to go out on his own because, see, he was prettier than God. He was smarter than God. And God was uh, tyrannical. And God wasn't a, a justified God. Is anybody with me so far? Let's go a bit further. In a book called Early Writings, here's what it says. Blake, it is a marvel to me, Mrs. White said, that Satan could succeed so well in making man believe that when God said the soul that sinneth shall die, that he says the soul that sinneth shall not die. She said, where's that coming from? She said, he is the master liar. He has convinced millions that no matter the lifestyle, you will be in heaven. She said, in essence, the devil is calling God a liar. She went on to say this, I'm astonished that people could interpret these scriptures. She said, God said, Ye shall eat of this tree. If you do, you shall surely die. She went on to say, They say, this new movement, that no matter the lifestyle that you choose, you will be in heaven. She said, in essence, they are calling God a liar. Come on, that takes nerve. That sounds like the devil to me. That movement, the devil's behind that movement. Is anybody with me so far? The devil's behind that movement. Let's go a bit further here. Now, Revelation 23, 3. Here's what the Bible says. Christ is the light of heaven. Christ is the light of this earth. Christ is the light of the universe. His glory, His light penetrates the shield of darkness and everyone that is possessed by Satan, if they will only allow them to, God will allow this light to penetrate their evil hearts. But they have to be well, they have to welcome the Holy Spirit. Let's go a bit further. And another writer said this Satan has led men to adopt is entirely to look at this. God, the Bible says, is a God of justice. 
She said the devil says that God is a God of injustice. Listen to this. The Bible says that God is loving and kind and merciful. But she said the devil says that God is tyrannical. Is anybody with me? That God is a dictator. That if you don't obey him, he will bring the hammer down on you. Come on, somebody. Is anybody with me here? The Bible says God's long-suffering. The Bible says that God is kind. The Bible says that God wishes that no one perish. Is anybody with me? Two different views here. Matthew 25, 32, 33, and 34. It's what the Bible says. And before Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, all nations shall gather. And when the whole world gathers before God, here's what happens, Blake and Susan. He shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep. And he shall say to the sheep on his right hand, Listen, come unto me and inherit heaven forever. A foundation, a kingdom that God has prepared just for you. But on his left hand, those that have rejected him, that has accepted total darkness from the devil, he says this, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Now, we have come to find out, as we've studied the Bible, that everlasting does not mean you burn forever and ever. Everlasting is the results of the fire. If you pile up a big, uh, say a big brush pile, Kathy, it's big. Finally, it will burn down to where there's nothing but ashes. Those trees and those brush are gone forever and ever and ever. Is everybody with me? Is the brush still alive? No, it's burned up. And Malachi, the fourth chapter, says that the righteous, those on the right, those that are the sheep of God, shall walk upon the ashes of those that rejected God. Is anybody with me so far? That there again, Doug, that's another subject that we need to cover at another time. Let's go a bit further here. Here's what Jesus said. I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to what his work shall be. Blessed are they that do God's commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life, that they may enter in through those gates into the new Jerusalem. We find here, as we close here, Blake, we find here that on that great day of judgment, at the appearing of God and His Son and the Holy Spirit and all of the angels of heaven, we find the unjust. We find the ungodly. We find the unrighteous that the Bible calls the goats, and they stand on the left hand of God. Now, I want to make this perfectly clear. We all know this here at our church, but those that are viewing in, let me make something perfectly clear today. Maybe you've never heard it. Maybe you have. There will be no second chance when God comes. There will be no reprieves. The book of life was sealed in the sanctuary when Christ left heaven. If your name was written down, praise God, you will be in heaven. If your name is not found written in the book of life, when God comes, you will not be in heaven. You will have eternal death. That being said, listen, emotions, traditions, Theories and philosophies. What about tradition? I spoke to a Christian lady one time. And we were talking about the Seventh-day Sabbath, Dad. And I told her why I keep the Sabbath. And there's many, many reasons why I keep the Sabbath. And she said, I keep Sunday. And I said, why do you keep Sunday? She said, because of tradition. I said, what tradition? She said, Christ resurrected on Sunday. My grandma keeps Sunday. My dad keeps Sunday. I keep Sunday. My children will keep Sunday. So because of tradition... I keep Sunday. I said, but that's not what the Bible says. Is anybody here with me? Now, let me make this perfectly clear. CJ, Ben, there will be people that keep the first day of the week in heaven. Don't get me wrong. There are those that live godly lives that keep Sunday, Jan, and they're going to be in the kingdom. But once you find out <laughs> about the seventh-day Sabbath, you can't toss it aside because of tradition. And everybody said, amen. <laughs> you can't toss it to the side. Whosoever, therefore, Jesus said, will confess me before men, I will confess him before my Father. But if you deny me, I have to deny you. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24 through 27, he said unto his disciples, if any man, black, white, Japanese, Chinese, American, if any man come after me, 
Let him deny himself, take up his cross, take up his responsibilities, and follow me. For so whoever shall lose his life, listen, he's saying, I'm going to even read the scripture. If you choose to decide to follow the world, you will be lost. That's your choice. We have come to find out, Rosemary, in the Bible, that God never forced himself on anyone. The freedom of choice was given to Adam and Eve. The freedom of choice, those that are viewing it today, is given you today. God is calling you, no matter your race, no matter your culture, no matter your background, he's calling you today to join his army. <laughs> Jesus Christ wants you. No matter where you've been in life, no matter what you've done, no matter how horrific it may be, the precious blood of Christ can wash you clean today. And all he asks that you do is fall before him and say, oh God, with a repentant heart and a sorrowful heart, I'm sorry. You know, as I look back, Bob, on my life, in fact, me and Bob's talked about it probably every morning. We regret so many things that we had done, so many things that we had said, but we have come to the conclusion we can't change any of it. So we have to start today with a new life in Jesus. Come on, somebody. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and wash your sins away. And then ask that the Holy Spirit come and reside in your heart. Now, it's not finished there. Every day of your life has to be devoted and given to God. Find yourself a Bible-based church that teaches what the Bible says and live up to all the light that you have. Now, one person asked me a few weeks ago. They said, Donnie, I'm not too smart. I'm not too sharp. I don't have a lot of knowledge of the Bible. Am I lost? Here's what I told him, Doug. Live up to what you know. Doug, you said it too. Live up to what you know. That's all that God expects. Come on. But as you study the Bible, eventually, the more you study, the all of a sudden, it'll start to click. That's what that means. That's what that scripture means. And as you study, the more light you receive from the Heavenly Father, live up to the light that you have. Come on, somebody. God doesn't, hey, if it's all about being a doctor or a Ph.D. degree to get to heaven, I'm in trouble. <laughs> it's all about accepting Jesus and then living the life, all that you know about him. And the more that you study the Bible, I'm going to tell you this, you're going to fall in love with Jesus Christ. And the more you love that you love him, the more light you receive and the more steadfast and strong that you become in serving Jesus Christ. So the bottom line is, those that are being in, living up to all the light that you had, that's all that Jesus is asking. But you know what you need to do today? Pray for more light. Amen. Pray for a closer walk with Christ. Pray that you'll start seeing yourself as you really are. Sometimes we look at ourselves in the mirror. I'm not such a bad guy. Oh, I'm bald-headed and I'm getting old, but I'm not a bad guy. We have a lot of work to do, <laughs> Elaine, don't we? <laughs> but God in His patience and His love and His grace loves me so much that if I fall down and be, be repentant, He will forgive me and He will give me the fortitude and help me to be solidified and fortified in my walk with Him. And so when that eastern sky splits wide open and I see Jesus, I won't be wailing because of fear. I'm going to be shouting, oh, praise God. We're getting out of here. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this message today. Lord, I know it was more of a teaching sermon. I know that. But we need to be taught. I need to be taught as well. We come to find out today that the old devil stepped in and his dark nature has taken over this world. But we come to find out that Jesus Christ is the light of the universe. He penetrates darkness. His light shines through all we have to do is to ask for it. So, Father, thank you for this message. Thank you that we found out you're a loving God. You're patient and kind and long-suffering, giving everyone the opportunity to accept you as Lord and Savior. So, Father, continue to guide this church, direct us, open different avenues that we may reach more people for Jesus. That's our prayer today. Thank you for this message. Thank you for your guidance and direction. I pray and ask these things. In the name of Christ, not just my creator, my best friend. In Jesus' name.